They're making rings now. You have to watch these things every second or look what they get up to. All right, so you can have carbon chains, and so far we've been drawing them looking like sticks or like zigzaggy sticks, but sometimes one end of an alkane or an alkene will connect to the other end and you end up getting a ring. Whenever that happens, there's just one word that we add on to the name, and it is cyclo. And hydrocarbons that do this are called cyclic, which is a word for a ring or a circle. So if you have a ring shape, you're going to be calling it cyclo something. And as before, the name comes from how many carbons are in this. This thing has one, two, three, four, five, six carbons in it. If it were a stick, we'd call it hexane. But when it's in a closed loop like this, we call it cyclohexane. And that's it. That's it for now. There's, you can see there's going to be branches and all kinds of other stuff coming in later, but let's just get used to this for now. So cyclohexane, this has four carbons, so if it were a stick we'd call it butane in ring form or square form we call it cyclobutane. Three carbons would normally be propane, in this case cyclopropane. There's no such thing as cycloethane because if you only have two carbons you can't make a closed ring. All you can make is a stick. And of course there's no such thing as cyclomethane because that's even worse. If you have one carbon you can't even get started drawing a loop. So you won't see any of those. Cyclopropane makes a triangle and that's the simplest cyclic structure we can come up with. How about D? That's a pentagon, so probably something about pentane. Five carbons, and because it's a ring, don't forget your cyclo. Okay, new one. Forget about the branch for a second. If you just had the hexagon, what would you call that? One, two, three, four, five, six carbons. Hexane, got to be cyclohexane. Now, new thing. When you have a stick, like with a just basic hexane, there's two places you can start the numbering. You can start on the far left end, or you can start on the far right end. But if you have a ring, you could start anywhere. This could be carbon number one, or this could, or this could, or this, or this, or this. Which one do we choose? Well, same rule that you're used to, the one that gives us the lowest number. So we're not going to call this 6-methyl cyclohexane, or 5-methyl, or 4. We're going to say, if we want the lowest number possible, we'll just say this is number one. If there's only one number in our entire molecule, let's make sure it's a 1. And so we call this 1-methyl cyclohexane. Okay, what about this? Um, just for a moment, I am going to blip out the branch. Let's ignore that. What if we just had that ring? It has 6 carbons, which means it's hex something. It contains a double bond here, so it's not hexane, it's hexene. And we can pick the numbering here, which means we're not going to call this hex2ene or hex3ene or hex4ene. The fact is, we are always, always, always going to pick our carbon number one to be on one side or the other of this double bond. Either that'll be 1, or this'll be 1. So, basically, you would always be calling this hex one in. And that means we generally don't put the number. So, if you wrote hex one in, that's a good idea, and you've got, you've got this. But, because we're automatically going to make it hex one in, they tend to suppress that number and just call this hex in. Oh, and, I'm sorry, this'll all make more sense when I put cyclo in front. So cyclohexanine is not a terrible answer, but they tend to cut it down to cyclohexene because you will always choose that to be carbon number one. Good with that so far? Okay. Now, we also have a branch. Where is that branch? It's a methyl group, so apparently this is methyl cyclohexene. 
where do we say that the branch is? Well, if this is carbon number one, we'd be going like two, three, four, five, because we'd have the lowest possible numbers on either side of our branch. Let me renumber this. There are two possibilities. Either we say this is carbon number one, and we go two, because the, we want the lowest possible numbers around our double bond. Then this would be three, four, five, and we'd have to call this 6-methylcyclohexene. Or the other option is we go 1, 2, so that we have the smallest numbers around our double bond. And then we go 3 here, and that's carbon number 3. That's much better. So 3-methylcyclohexene is what you should end up with for that one. If you're thinking, why not call this one and then go two here, it's because you want the lowest numbers to be before and after your double bond. That never came up when we were doing linear alkenes. I apologize for that. I wish we'd done some examples so that you could see that, but we get to spring it on you now that we're doing cyclics. When you put your one on one side of a double or a triple bond, you're committing to putting your two on the other side of that bond. And sometimes that has awkward consequences for the other numbers, but it has to be done. So in this case, it means we have to go either one, two, or one, two. You can't go one and then off in the other direction. Even though that would give us a nice low number here, it breaks the rule for alkenes, so no good. OK, the difficulty keeps coming up here. I'm going to start doing the cyclics a little faster and just worry about the branches, because you probably got this part. Our primary is this. We call it cyclohexene. I'm sorry, cyclohexane. I'm so used to doing enes. This is all single bonds, so cyclohexane. It has two branches on it. One of them is an ethyl group. One of them is a, I'm sorry, methyl group. Alphabetical order means we do the ethyl first, and that means we want this to have the lowest possible number. We just decided that this is going to be a 1. 1 ethyl. Now, because we don't have any double bonds to force us to go in a certain direction, we could go this way and say 2, 3, 4, 5 methyl. That's if we go counterclockwise. Or if we go clockwise, it's only 3, so yeah, we'll take that. 1 ethyl, 3 methyl. Cyclohexane. This is a square, it's got four carbons, therefore it is butane. They're in a loop, so cyclobutane. And there's a single methyl group. What do you think of this? If you think that's good, yeah, it's all right. What do you think of the number, though? Is that necessary? When there's only one branch and there's nothing else that requires any kind of numbering, then of course we are always going to declare this carbon number one, and that means generally we will just let that one slide, and we'll just call this methylcyclobutane. Because there's nowhere else, there's no other atom except number one that we would ever put that methyl on. We will automatically, the one will be ma magnetically attracted to this because it's the only feature in the whole thing. So, one methylcyclobutane, not a terrible answer, but this is a little more polished. Uh, what do we have here? Five carbons means our primary is pentane. And because it's in a ring, it's cyclopentane. And now we have a methyl group on it and an ethyl group on it. Ethyl goes first, of course. That means this just became carbon number one. So we can say one ethyl. Now, because we're free to go clockwise or counterclockwise, if we go counterclockwise, then two, three, four methyl. And I'm writing this up above so you know it's not the one we're going with. If we go clockwise, then it's only three methyl. And that's the one we like. 
So now we're committed to going clockwise. 1-ethyl-3-methylcyclopentane. And finally, this has 6, so that's a, it's going to be a cyclohexane. And what's on this? We have an ethyl group. Ethyl starts with E. We have two methyl groups. Those start with M. So alphabetical order says the ethyl goes first. We have made this carbon number 1. And we'll say 1-ethyl. Now we have two methyl groups, so we're going to be saying dimethyl. Now, how do we number this? If we go clockwise, we get 2, 3, 4, 5. It would be 3, 5 dimethyl. If we go counterclockwise, we get 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh, it's 3, 5 dimethyl either way, so it doesn't matter which order we go. This thing is symmetric. 1-ethyl-3,5-dimethylcyclohexane. Yeah, they keep on coming. What do we have here? Hexagon again, so cyclohexane. Okay, and then we have, these are both methyl groups, so it's going to be dimethylcyclohexane. And what do you think for the numbers? One of these has to be carbon number one. And now, you could go completely the wrong way and say this is carbon number six, but why not just go clockwise and say these are on carbons one and two? There's no other features that force us to go in a particular direction, so one, two dimethylcyclohexane should do the trick there. Okay, this thing. This is line structural, but they're dr it's a funny three-dimensional shape. That's almost, it's almost shaped like a tent frame, and they're trying to represent what the 3D shape looks like while doing a line diagram at the same time, and it makes this look a little crazy. But the point is, focus on how many corners there are, that's how many carbons there are. There's a 1, and a 2, and a 3, and a 4, and a 5, and a 6. This is still cyclohexy, and it's just it's like a hexagon that's been bent or folded down the middle. But we don't have to take any note of that in this form. We just call it cyclohexane. Now, it's got a methyl group on it. And here's two carbons. This is an ethyl group on it. Alphabetical order says we do the ethyl group first. So this is carbon number one now at the peak. And we say one ethyl. Now, if I go clockwise around this, this is 2, 3, 4 methyl. And what if we go counterclockwise? Then this is 1, and then we go 2, 3, and oh, it's 4 either way. Okay. Yay for symmetric, symmetric molecules. It has to be 1 ethyl, 4 methyl cyclohexane. Okay. Cyclo what? Let's blip out our branches just for a moment so we can concentrate. What would we call this? It's got six carbons, so it's got to be a hex. It contains a double bond, so it's a hexene. And we know we have to number it either 1, 2, or 1, 2. The 1 and 2 have to straddle that double bond, so we'll decide that order in a minute. Hexene. Do we have to say hexuanine? No, we don't, because we're automatically going to number it hexuanine. That's the dominant feature. It automatically gets car attached to carbon number 1. The question is, what do we do with these branches? We have a methyl group here and another methyl group here. So this is dimethyl. Oh dear. Do you see what's missing from this? Cyclo. When the whole page is cyclo, I guess I stop noticing it. Cyclo dimethyl cyclohexene is where we are at now. And how do we number this? If we go counterclockwise, and this goes one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, those sound awful high. I'll bet we can do better than that. 
if we go the other way, then it's 1, 2, 3, and 4, and yeah, that's much superior. So 3, 4 dimethylcyclohexene. Okay, what do we have this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 carbons. They're all single bonds, so this is an octane. It's ring-shaped, so cyclooctane. And what kind of branches have we got? Methyl, another methyl, and an ethyl group. So alphabetical order says the ethyl comes first, and wherever it's attached gets to be carbon number one. So one ethyl. And then how do we do our methyls? If we go clockwise, then this is on number two. If we go counterclockwise, this is on number two. So apparently it doesn't matter. The fact that this thing is symmetric is going to make that not matter. So we have two comma, if that's one, and that's two, then we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This will be two, eight, dimethyl cyclooctane. And what is this last thing? Again, I think this is supposed to be a three-dimensional structure that's bent in two different directions, and they're representing that by the corners. But what matters to us is how many carbons. One there, and two, three, four, five, six. This is cyclohexane. It's bent all funny, but it's still cyclohexane. And what's on it? This is an ethyl group, so what do you think of this? One ethyl cyclohexane. That's pretty much right, except because there's only one feature and it's the ethyl group and it's absolutely required to be on carbon number one, there is really no need to say the one. You could drop that and just call this ethyl cyclohexane.